I want to start this video off by saying I am not the sort of person to go out and spend £250 on a set of headphones or earphones. Uh, my Bear Dynamic headphones that I use for editing and listening to music and all that and everything and gaming, that all cost me £100 and I think that's a brilliant set of headphones, probably the best headphones I've ever used. So this isn't me to go out and spend money on at least a set of wireless earphones when I've got these cheap £20 ones. But I wanted something more as I will often listen to music and podcasts whilst exercising, working, or just chilling, really. And as someone with social anxiety, it's pretty much a must that I have active noise cancelling, especially going out in my garden that's in, like, the middle of <laughs> the middle of a fairly busy town. It gets quite loud. You get kind of that sensory overload kind of dealio. And uh, let me just tell you, and I'm sure anyone with like fairly severe anxiety will get this, being able to go out and not have panic attacks and just be kind of lost in your own little bubble with the noise cancelling, it's a superpower that I wish I had like 10 years ago when I, you know, I, I just, I think I would have spent way more time outdoors if I had that. So yeah, it's really nice to have it. Obviously that's not an AirPods exclusive thing but it is something that I wanted to kind of talk about because I suppose for a lot of people, ANC is a nice to have, but for me, it's not necessarily a need to have, but it's, it, it basically changes your life. Of course, there are like heaps of other options with brands like Sony who create some fantastic active noise cancelling true wireless headphones or earphones, well, both of those. I picked the AirPods, however, because I imagined the shape to be a bit better fit for my ears. The instant pairing would be also a game changer, and I generally heard great things about them. And at the time, Apple were doing 12 months, 0% finance, so I just thought, yeah, let's go for it. Right off the bat, I'm not sure if these things are really worth £250. That's a lot of money. You can get a decent phone or a usable laptop for that kind of money. And some people's first cars even cost that much. So they aren't necessarily the best on the market either. Like the value isn't the focus and neither is the high end quality of the AirPods Pros. Not that this should matter all that much, but let's talk about the aesthetics for a minute. The buds and the case are made of this horrible shiny white plastic that picks up micro scratches like nobody's business and because they're so expensive I've put a cheap silicone case on it which not only adds a layer of protection but also some much needed grip because the case is fairly slippery as is. The form factor is fairly small and easily pocketable and the lack of USB-C is a pain but there is of course the saving grace of wireless charging. The buds have this short stem which looks Weird compared to what I'm used to, but the shape of the driver housing fits absolutely perfectly in my ears. Seriously, I used the uh, Apple Air, Air, no, Ear, Earpods and the original Apple earphones for so long, the ones that kind of sit in your ear as opposed to go in your ear, because uh, for the longest time, in-ear monitors, or the, the kind of like uh, the ones with the little earbuds on them, they just wouldn't fit in my ears, they wouldn't stay in my ears, they're really uncomfortable, sometimes they're actually quite painful, I've never had a set of in-ear earphones that actually fit my ears as well as these do. Wow, someone is giving it the beans. Of course your mileage may vary and it's very subjective. Obviously everyone's ears are different shapes, but yeah, I was really surprised how well these things fit. The flat portions of each stem are pressure sensors that give off a haptic feeling and are used for controlling the noise cancelling mode and skipping tracks along with other things. Though I just left mine at the default settings because I don't use Siri. The shape, pressure and weight of the AirPods Pros were great for me. I've been practicing football freestyle for the past couple of months and so having these not become loose after an hour or so session with me jumping about all over the place uh, is really handy and stops me worrying so that I can focus on what I'm doing. I can listen with these things for about three to four hours before any fatigue sits in which is handily right about how long these things last with the active noise cancelling mode on. With this off, you should expect about five hours of battery life, which isn't bad at all. And with the case, you actually get an extra 24 hours of usage before needing to plunk the whole lot on a charger. I get about a week of use with these before needing to charge the whole thing, which is, I'm fine, I'm happy to charge them after a week because that was about the same as my old Blitzwolf earphones. With these ones, the pain is that it's lightning, but because my phone is also lightning, it doesn't matter all that much. And recently I've been using wireless charging a lot anyway so there really isn't much of an issue there but I really do wish they'd switch to USB-C fairly soon. 
The connection between the AirPods Pros and my iPhone 11 has been 95% solid. On the very odd occasion, I'd have to put them back in the case and then reseat them in my ears to connect them to my phone. But that's pretty rare, especially when compared to my prior experience with the Blitzwolf that I was using. Uh, they work kind of awful when connected to the iPhone. Connected to Android, it's a completely different story though. I've been able to leave my phone in the house and pop out into the garden through a solid interior wall and an exterior wall combined with about 15 meters of distance without a hitch and then any further beyond this there tends to be drops and hangs. And I think that's pretty impressive if you ask me considering most of the time I just leave my phone in the shed whilst I go out and practice and that's only a few meters away with no connection problems whatsoever. The sound signature of these is really strange because going into this, obviously Apple owned Beats, I was fully expecting there to be a lot of bass. There wasn't, there's not a lot of bass. There's, it's a fairly flat sound curve I would imagine, which again is strange because Beats are typically known for having kind of the, the U curve. And as much as I, I do appreciate the fact that I can clearly hear a lot of the sounds and different parts of the song, the different layers of the songs that I'm listening to. And for podcasts, fantastic, uh, really, really clear audio. It's not all that fun to listen to if you're used to kind of hip hop or uh, bass heavy songs. So I do enjoy listening to my music, which is a, a wide variety of different genres, including metal, including pop, including rap, every kind of every kind of music. It's a it's kind of good for suiting all of those music types. However, what I would kill for, and something that could be easily done in a software update, is just having an EQ so that you can tune the buds to how you want them to sound. For maybe you only listen to metal or you only listen to kind of acoustic stuff, then you kind of want a different signature for that. The way it is now, it's not necessarily something that would require a hardware change, but rather something that could come in a software update. So maybe Apple will do that in the future. For now, though, that is a little bit annoying. The microphones on these, whilst I didn't do proper testing, must be alright because no one I called complained of sound quality issues and they couldn't even tell that I wasn't using my phone, so that's great. And the same goes for the screen delay when gaming. I didn't notice a massive delay, but I wasn't playing many games. Rounding out my review of these, these earbuds are not worth £250, but then again I don't think any Apple product is worth the price that it kind of is. I think there's definitely an Apple tax going on there. If these were 175 I would absolutely be happy to pay that money. I'm not, obviously I have paid £250, not necessarily happy about that. However, there is one thing to talk about here. The competition and the competitors are bringing in earphones in the same kind of genre, you know, true wireless things from big companies, not necessarily the kind of niche stuff with good sound quality and, and all that kind of thing for around the same price, if not a little bit less. So I feel like the price is kind of warranted if you took like the $200 Sony's or $200 Pixel Buds, whatever, and added the Apple tax, it kind of makes sense and it kind of goes with the rest of the Apple products. So whilst I'm not completely happy that I had to spend that much money, I have probably never used a set of earphones that are just so seamless and work so well with the iPhone. Uh, that brings me onto my recommendation. If you own an iPhone and you're not willing to go with Sony's, then go with the AirPods, AirPods, AirPods Pros, whatever they're, they're calling them these days. However, if you're on Android, don't even bother. There are so many fantastic options outside of the Apple ecosystem that you should just go with those instead. So this kind of leaves me on a 50-50. Well, the AirPods Pros are fantastic, I'm not sure if I'd recommend them to everyone. So definitely do your research before buying them because there may be better options for you. And that pretty much leaves this video. I, uh, yeah, I wanna thank you all so much for watching. I know this is a bit more Apple-y, bit, a bit outside of what I'm used to producing videos for. I will leave links to the case that I'm using in the video description and a couple of others that you can check out as well. And maybe some wireless charging pads as well because I got some, I got like a pair of them the other day for 15 pounds and they've been fantastic. They're USB-C and everything. Please do like, dislike, comment and subscribe to never miss a video like this one and also check out all my social media links which will be in the video description as always. I want to give a massive shout out to my patrons for being fantastic and continually supporting me. Thank you so much guys, it means a lot. I've been Ryan Thomas and I'll see you later.